full backfire. White House trampled Meghan mercilessly. Ban her to interfere in politics. Hello friends, welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. Do you think it's feasible that Harry and Meghan ask the White House for something, Jill or Joe? You may be aware of the Invictus video and Meghan's political shenanigans when she wrote a letter requesting admission to an event. My personal theory is that Meghan believed the White House operated similarly to the British royal family, in that if she knows the right person or flexes her title, she can be connected directly to Joe or Jill, instead of having to go through all the different assistants first. This is based on what I know about DC functions. I believe that either A, she made too many calls and played the don't you know who I am, how dare you card when she finally spoke to someone, or B, they gave her one courtesy meeting or phone call that resulted in the entire if you give a mouse a cookie scenario. In either case, the White House promptly put down a firm boundary to stop it in its tracks. I have a sense that when she requested to board Air Force One after the burial, the White House stopped being polite and started telling her no. However, rumor has it that Meghan genuinely and horribly overplayed her hand on two distinct occasions. First, when she lobbied for paid parental leave, and second, when she lobbied for Newsom to succeed Feinstein. Meghan's use of the senator's personal lines while they are on paid parental leave is a serious violation of protocol. As the party's leader, Biden would have been aware of it. She also irritated all the California Democrats by exerting such intense pressure on Newsom to oust Feinstein because she was effectively trying to bypass the entire system. They undoubtedly heard about it since California Democrats make up a sizable portion of the current Democratic coalition, which includes Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris. I have heard rumors that Kamala despises Meghan so much that she either blocks her or refuses to answer her calls. Therefore, something undoubtedly happened. A couple of the female senators even commented on it. They were civil and polite, but the underlying message was, who does Meghan think she is? I remember Senator Susan Collins of Maine also said something about only caring what her constituents thought about the issue and not some rando in California. What the news outlets failed to report was that the paid family leave that Meghan was pushing would force companies to pay full salaries to employees to take months off to support anyone they considered to be like family for anything medical they were going through and was not limited to immediate family members taking maternity and paternity leave. This included if a friend was feeling depressed or dealing with behavioral issues, i.e. half the country these days. Obviously, such a policy could cripple American companies and force them into replacing full-time staff with more part-time staff and contractors to avoid paying large amounts to people who don't work while being mandated to keep their jobs open. That would remove all benefits to some very decent, hard-working Americans. Or worse, it could force smaller companies into bankruptcy. Most government workers already have protected maternity and paternity leave job protection. And if they choose to, they can pay for insurance that covers two thirds or more of their time off with 15 to 25% of every state's workforce already working in government jobs. Many private sector companies already offer full pay time for both mom and dad. Megan was trying to gain fast and easy popularity by playing Santa Claus with other people's money. Unfortunately, we, the ones without the $100 million Netflix deals, would have to end up paying for her Oprah-like mad giveaways as consumers. The employers who could survive such giveaways would always pass on the cost to every person choosing to stay home because their friends or neighbors aren't feeling well. It only takes a few minutes to look up the facts. Shame on the media for not bothering. By the way, this is why the bill didn't pass. Most people favor a form of paid maternity leave, but not something this broad and expansive that's written to encourage financial abuse. 
Megan really is a despicable person who probably only contacted these people because she wanted to state that she is the Duchess of Sussex. She probably played a game with herself to see how often she could mention her title in the conversation. She doesn't care about anyone other than herself, and that includes her poor children who are now going to grow up massively damaged. One commenter said, I definitely believe that politicians are distancing themselves from these two. They can read the room and know that they aren't well-liked, connected, or wealthy. They would also want to side with or at least appear to be on the side of the royal family since they have all the fun parties and diplomatic events. If it's true she called on private lines to harass them about a political issue, possibly while they're at home relaxing, this would have predisposed many politicians to dislike her. Politicians are just like narcs. They always pretend to not know you when your star is falling. And the Sussexes have crashed so hard they're leaving a crater. It's really nonsense about Meghan in politics. She will never be president. For every single reason you are thinking of. She is sending cease and desist to the royal rogue because she's so thin-skinned. What is she going to do when her political adversaries show her evidence of being a yacht girl? The evidence she lied to Oprah. Call her out for missing the king's coronation. Uvalde. Private jet use. Lying about South Africans celebrating her wedding. Keeping the elephant money. Spending one million on clothes. Lack of worth ethic. Destroying two families. Using of royal titles in America. Giving away private family information. Leaking private info to the media. Whenever I hear a non-American journalist talk about Meghan's presidential aspirations, I just roll my eyes. American journalists should just know better. It's not impossible, but with the Electoral College and Megzi's unpopularity, it is not happening. I guess if we had a different system here, it might be more likely because Meghan is good at networking behind the scenes. But she is not good at connecting with a wide range of people. It is easy for a relatively unpopular Republican to win the presidency than a Democrat because of the Electoral College. Meghan is never winning over the Midwest and the South. She has pissed off New York now. Her only shot was California, and if she ticked off the Dems there. American politics is a seniority-based system. Usually, you have to work your way up the ladder, pay your dues, and work inside the system. You have to prove your value. You don't get plum jobs without some vetting. Megan keeps using her sharp elbows to get into various systems and demands top dollar and top spot. They keep throwing her out wherever she goes. What do you think of the White House's disdain for Meghan and Harry? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.